Hi, I'm Yvonne and welcome to the RV Cooking Show, a place where we can share our passion for RVing and our love for recreating regional food specialties right here in my RV kitchen. We decided to call this episode of the Food Fun and Friends at Flying Flag Series Dinner in a Movie in honor of three terrific fellows here in the Santa Inez Valley. Those three fellows are David Walker from Firestone Walker Brewing Company, just up the road from Flying Flags RV Resort, Richard Boucher, Flying Flags Barbecue Master Extraordinaire and the inspiration for today's dish, and of course, Monty Roberts from Flag Is Up Farms. So let's get started. Let's head over to the Firestone Walker Brewing Company's Tap Room Restaurant and Bar and visit a little bit with David Walker. America is probably the richest brewing community in the world at the moment. There are 1,800 breweries now in the country and 600 are in development this year alone. So you can go anywhere in the U.S. now and find great local breweries, small, mid-size, um, large, and try a whole range of different beers. We brew about 100,000 barrels of beer, um, which is, breweries mark their size in barrels. Is um, that a year or a...? A year. 100,000 barrels yeah. a year. I, I mean, just to put it in perspective, <laughs> one, of your small mic, one of your small brew pubs that just brews out of a restaurant might brew two, 3,000 barrels. Um, a, a large independent brewer like Samuel Adams brews two million barrels. Sierra Nevada Brewing Company brew a million. Our main focus is pale ales. Not all pale ales are mm. equal. Um, we make a British pale ale, a California pale ale, an India pale ale. Um, a double imperial India pale ale, um, a whole range of, of, of pale ales. Um, but we also make you know, some stouts, a Hefeweizen, a Belgian farmhouse ale, a Russian imperial stout. Um, I mean, part of the nature of being a small brewer is that you can offer a range of different things. Our British pale ale is probably the flagship for the brewery, but our California pale ale also is strong, and our India pale ale. Um, and each one is, is very different to the palate. Um, um, hops make a huge difference to the, uh, the balance and bittering of, 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 of the beers and, and that's one of the, you know, the biggest changes in the three, mm -hmm. three styles. Where do you source your ingredients from, your hops for instance? Um, you know our hops, we um, pull some of them in from Europe. For the British, the British pale ales, we're pulling them in from uh, Slovenia and parts of England um, because they, um, uh, they're called noble hops. They're, they're very sort of um, uh, subtle mellow style of hop, whereas in our California pale ales and our India pale ales, they want bold, aromatic hops, which we pull out of the Pacific Northwest. Fresh beers like fresh bread, like, like any really well-made um, food product, is the fresher it is, the better. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise you have to sort of somehow preserve it. Mm -hmm. um, pasteurization or um, obviously temperature preserves things heavily, but um, the key thing for us is fresh beer. And are you a, a brewer? Are you a beer maker, I, personally? Technically, I'm a brewer because I own a brewery, um, but we, uh, we, we were lucky enough to recognize that we needed some real brewers here very early on. And um, currently, our, our, our master brewer, who is, is actually our partner, Adam Feierstein and myself, um, uh, and Matt Brunelson are all partners. Uh, Matt Brunelson is our head brewer, and. Uh, is is arguably, and this is not my endorsement, is arguably one of the top brewers in the world at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. He he makes his beers win um, medals um, very regularly, and um, because of that, the brewery has been awarded best mid-sized brewer in the world three times um, in the last um, four competitions at the World Beer Cup. So, really? Yeah. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, That's yeah, terrific. No. It's a small it's like being Tiddly Weeks champion, but you know, the <laughs> brewers rec wow. brewers recognize it. So. It's a hugely important thing that um, a brewery has a visionary um, who's just focused one hundred percent on brewing the beer. Not worried about building buildings, selling beer, um, working on labels and design, but they're just their vision is one hundred percent what goes in the mouth. So. Mm -hmm. Walker's Reserve Porter, double barrel. Yeah. Cheers. Salud. Thank you so much. One of the live Flying Flags events we did was called Dinner in a Movie, and barbecue master Richard Boucher made some killer chili for the event. He even added some leftover tri-tip, if you can believe there was any leftover tri-tip. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make my chili. It's easy, simple, delicious, it's meatless, and it has cashews in it.
So here's how we do it. We've got a pot with a little bit of canola oil. It's on about medium high. I'm going to add to that some fresh peppers and some fresh onion. These are yellow, red, and orange peppers, but you can use green peppers from the grocery store just as well. And the onion is a medium onion. This is about two thirds of the onion. The other third I've reserved to have on top of the chili when it's done. So right into our pan it goes. We're going to saute the vegetables for about five minutes. We want them to get nice and soft, but we don't want to overcook them either. Our vegetables are nice and soft and fragrant, and it's time to add the rest of the ingredients. So I'm going to start with a can, a large can of San Marzano tomatoes. These are diced. I'm going to pour the whole thing, juice, tomatoes, and everything in. I'm also going to add a can of tomato sauce right on the top. I've got two kinds of beans. I've got kidney beans and I've got pinto beans. I've rinsed them. I'm just going to put them right in. Right on top like that. Next comes my chili seasoning. I like to use a salt-free chili seasoning just because I like to be able to add as much salt or as little salt as I like. I really love this brand by the way. Right in the mix like that and we're going to stir everything together. When everything is mixed, I'm going to share some of my precious Walker Reserve Porter. I'm going to pour about half a bottle for this particular recipe into the chili mix. Oh, that looked like a little more than half. The dark beer is going to add a little depth of flavor, make it really delicious. The last thing I'm going to add are my cashews. These are lightly salted, dry toasted cashews. I'm going to add, oh, about half a cup now. And then before I serve it, about five minutes or so, I'm going to add some other cashews. So we'll have some that are nice and soft and delicious and some that are a little crunchy. So right in. He's the Queen of England's personal horse trainer. He was the inspiration for Nicholas Evans's book, The Horse Whisperer, and Elizabeth Taylor's Double on Horseback in the movie National Velvet. I had the distinct honor to visit with Monty Roberts and his wife, sculpture artist Pat Roberts, at their beautiful home overlooking their Flag is Up farms. It was fascinating. I think you'll enjoy it. I wasn't in the horse business until I was three. And before that, I was just learning to walk and talk and stumble around, you know? Three? Really? You waited that long? I was riding a horse by myself when I was two. And I was in competition on a horse a month after I was four years of age. Hmm. And I've never known anything else. So people say, you know, how did you get involved with horses? I just didn't have any choice. I was born to parents that had a riding school. And there were two or three hundred horses around me uh, ever since I can remember. I believed, um, as a very young boy, that violence wasn't necessary in the training of horses. And I moved to have a violence-free set of concepts. And the horses kept telling me I was right. And I've had nine world champions now, and each one of them is celebrating the work that I did with them. But in doing this, uh, the work that I was doing was so different from anything else that it was controversial, as it would be. And it wasn't until the Queen of England in 1989 endorsed my work and really said it's worthwhile and put me on a mission globally to get the message out. Now, at 76 years of age, I'm going into that mode by which I have to leave a legacy now so that the next generation can go on and I'm doing that through an online university and long after I'm gone they'll be seeing my concepts at work and uh, getting to know them and and the next generation will be able to experiment with a totally non-traditional way of working with horses in a non-violent manner. Is that where the moniker that I understand that you are the original horse whisperer that's pretty amazing. Tell me about that. Well, yeah, it's a title. Actually, somebody was known as the Horse Whisperer about a hundred years ago. And he, he was a guy that went over to work for Queen Victoria on a horse called Pilgrim. And um, 
somebody said, what does he do with these horses? And they said, oh, he just takes them out behind the barn and whispers to them. So he was really the original horse whisperer, although neither one of us ever whispered to any horses. Are you sure? I'm positive. <laughs> uh, in jest, maybe, but not uh, seriously trying to train them of course. You know, in any way. But um, Nicholas Evans, an English man, came to one of my demonstrations way back in 1990. And uh, he decided to write the book and call it The Horse Whisperer. And he, he used my work as a uh, model for most of the stuff that he did. But Disney decided to make a movie, and then they brought a lot of uh, violence into the routine, and I never could abide by the work that um, they did in that movie. That just wasn't me at all. Here we are in Monty's backyard, and this is a view of Flag is Up Farm. It's a gorgeous spot, isn't it? It's an amazing spot. This is paradise. You know, the San Inez Valley is a secret. It's an, a magical area. I think the energy here is fantastic. And uh, we have such great neighbors here. And it's just a wonderful place to be. And you were quite the movie star, I understand. Well, I, I was in my first film. Never a movie star. No, no. <laughs> I was in my first film in 1939. I was four years old. <laughs> and they used me as a stunt double for children because horse and kid movies were the real thing of the day, you know. And uh, so beginning in 1939, I was doing these little kids doing stunts uh, in these movies. Uh, Roddy McDowell and I looked a lot alike. And he couldn't ride a horse at all. <laughs> and so I had a job with any time Roddy McDowell did a horse film, I was there to do the stunt work. And then I doubled for Liz Taylor, and it was, yeah, quite a career. For Liz Taylor? Yeah. Absolutely delightful. Well, thank you for coming and visiting with me. The chili is simmered for 30, 40 minutes. All the flavors have melded together, and it's ready to eat. I like my chili served with some shredded cheddar cheese on the top, some finely minced onion, alongside a fresh California avocado. You might also top it with sour cream, cilantro, or jalapenos. Whatever you like, make it your own. I'm going to enjoy my cashew chili today with some Walker's Reserve Porter, fresh from my growler that I filled up at the Firestone Walker Brewing Company. Next time you're at Flying Flags RV Resort, make sure you ask them about their movies under the stars. They've got a gigantic inflatable movie screen poolside and they show some terrific films. If it's hot enough out, you can even have a dive in movie. Well, thank you so much for joining us here for this episode of Food, Fun, and Friends at Flying Flags, Our Dinner in a Movie. You can find this recipe for my cashew chili, as well as more information about Firestone Walker Brewing Company and Flag is Up Farms on my website, www.rvcookingshow.com. You can follow me on Facebook, and you can also watch this series on Flying Flags' website, flyingflags.com. Thank you again for coming over today. We look forward to seeing you again next time on The RV Cooking Show. Cheers.